Hi, my name is uh, Jerry Dakin. I'm the uh, EMEA Media Director at GSK Consumer Healthcare, uh, where we support brands like Panadol, Sensodyne, Volterol. Uh, and I also uh, am part of the WFA Global Media Council uh, and the Diversity and Inclusion Board. Um, and I'm here today to talk a bit about uh, what we can do to improve our media and improve our marketing uh, as we go into the year ahead. And obviously, this is a very strange time. Uh, a lot of odd things are happening in, in the media environment in the world around us. A lot of us are facing real personal and business challenges. Um, I totally acknowledge that. Uh, but at the same time, for those of us who are um, still at work or still able to spend the time to think about um, what we will do next and where we want to go next, um, I think it's important for us to keep talking about, you know, what good looks like in our industry and, and you know, if you've got time and you're not judging the, juggling the kids and uh, or judging the kids uh, and you know managing all that craziness, well, let's let's take just 10, 15 minutes to say what could we do differently in some of our media plans. Um, and so, ten things. Maybe they're not everything. Maybe they are everything. Um, they kind of come out of some of what we're talking about internally at GSK. Um, obviously, we go into a lot more specific detail, but I wanted to share um, some of our overarching thoughts. And the first one for me, and it kind of should guide all of them is about keeping it simple uh, and building on success. We have a tendency in media and digital and marketing to really overcomplicate things, to always want to do lots and lots of different, complex, latest, exciting things. But a really good media plan can be quite a simple media plan. Yes, you need to make sure you're reaching consumers in some different places and across their consumer journey, but it doesn't have to be super complicated. Um, they're not sexy, they're not fun, but actually delivering really brilliant media basics, uh, maximizing reach, driving continuity by spreading your media across the year, that often makes a lot more difference than some of the really complex media planning, channel selection, strategy choices. Those are the icing on the cake. Those take a plan to the next level. Uh, but if you're not investing on doing those basics and, and, and simple things first, you know, don't reinvent the wheel. Start with what you did last year. If that worked for you, that's a good basis for a plan. Yes, look at changes to consumers. Yes, look at new opportunities. Um, but you don't need to start from scratch every year and, and work really closely with your agency. If you're brand side, if you're agency side, you know, the best stuff comes from when you work together and you avoid added complexity in that relationship. You make yourselves more like one team. Uh, the second point is a, is a real passion point of mine about being relevant to more people and not visible to fewer. And this talks about how marketers approach data and targeting, uh, especially in this kind of digital age. Um, and there is a big watch out here that digital has allowed us to do a lot more targeting, to be a lot more personalised. Um, but is that always a good idea? Is that always a good thing? Um, because actually brands grow by reaching more people, by persuading uh, less interested, less bothered people to buy your brands occasionally. Those are kind of people who almost by definition are kind of hard to spot with data. They're not giving off lots and lots of signals that they're interested in your brand or your category. They may not even be shopping your category right now, but they will at some point. How do you make sure you're reaching them? And that's why really broad reaching stuff, you know, good old fashioned TV, but also when you're buying Facebook and social media and other digital channels, you probably want to make sure that a fair amount of your media is really broadly targeted because those consumers are what help you grow. That doesn't mean that data and targeting isn't important, uh, but don't use data and targeting to really specifically limit who you're speaking to at the risk of losing those people. But yes, use it to be more relevant within those broad audiences. Find ways of segmenting, find ways of knowing people who for certain reasons, might be more interested in your category, might be more interested in your content, um, target those people. Yes, chase them, find them, you know, in a GDPR compliant way. Don't always rely on personal data, use context. Find ways of getting that message across to them. But make sure that you have a plan that has that targeting at its heart, that has that different personalization, but also has catch-alls, that has layers of ways of reaching other people. Um, because if you chase data too much, um, you'll actually find it hinders what you're doing in marketing and it doesn't leverage any of its, any of its promise. It, it hurts us. Um, the third one is really about mapping media then across that kind of consumer experience journey, that purchase cycle, I suppose. Um, thinking about category entry points, uh, which is kind of an Ehrenberg Bass way of thinking about marketing. But, you know, where do people uh, start shopping your category? At what point do they start to think about buying, to start to come into it? 
how have you covered off the different touch points and of course building your brand and having mental availability and ensuring that people know you exist is a key one obviously having physical availability and making sure they can buy you as well but if there are certain points in that journey where they're likely to research and search or look for you or ask for recommendations how do you use your media to make sure you show up there as well um, a fourth point for us um, is really about catching up with consumers um, I think many brands get left behind in consumers and this isn't about chasing the next big thing. It isn't about running a big campaign on TikTok. It's often uh, simple places we need to catch up. You know, consumers, especially during these strange times, are massively shifting to e-commerce. Are you doing enough in the e-commerce media space? Um, consumers are spending huge amounts of time on social media. A lot of advertisers think they're doing social media because they have social pages and they do occasional posts and organic and put a little bit of money behind it. But, but doing uh, social and Twitter and Facebook at the scale of consumers means, you know, really substantial reach, 40 to 60 to 70 percent of a broad target audience, you know, every week for, the, for a period of a campaign. That, that can be quite big money you know, for a big brand that's taking a, a big chunk out of TV, even for a smaller brand, however small you are. Uh, you know, using social media, if you, even if you're a tiny one man band, unless you completely don't value your time at all, you'll find that putting five pounds behind social media posts makes it instantly more transformative and value for your business than just relying on, on organic and, and hoping people find you. So don't just think you're doing those key channels, but really accelerate them. Uh, and that brings us to kind of the fifth point, and certainly for kind of big brands, big global brands doing a lot of different media, you need to stop thinking about TV GRPs and you need to build reach across all media. Um, if you never see a TV plan again, you're probably doing quite well. Not because TV is not important, TV is really important, uh, but because you want to see a true total reach, total frequency. The reality is you can't always buy it and cap it like that, but you can understand and predict it. And certainly evolving your TV plan so they include catch up, online video, other ways that consumers are, are, are consuming TV and other channels that do the same job. Don't necessarily count uh, reach for all your channels. Um, Facebook and social channels can play a role in this, but usually they're doing something different. They're showing a few seconds of creative or less, uh, not a full on TV ad. So maybe they're more about prompting and following up and, and, and reminding people. Um, but yeah, our, our sixth point, it's a, it's a real sort of specific one about growth and balance and how you, you start having a conversation with the finance team in your business. But you talk about uh, total media sufficiency and building a business case that is about how much money you need. And sufficiency is an interesting question. If someone says, are you spending enough money? It's quite hard to answer. It depends what they mean. Are you spending enough money to maximize sales, to maximize profit, to maximize growth? They can be quite different things because um, the amount of money you might want to spend to maximize growth uh, might mean less profit, less ROI. It depends what your business ambition is. But if you are trying to grow fast, then you need to spend more. And I think having a serious grown up conversation with your finance team about, you know, how much we should be spending, not just assuming that you're using last year's budgets, but, but really looking at what your business goals and how can media help drive that uh, helps elevate the role media can have within your business. Um, then beyond that, think long term. It's the seventh point. Think long term. Uh, it's really, you know, the, the classic word of Binet, works of Binet and Field, the long and the short of it, balancing long and short term. Increasingly, especially with digital and, and hyper targeted media, we look very much at that short term, that conversion, that what did we sell this month? But really, we know that's about 40% of what marketing is supposed to be delivering. And this 60% is about long term brand building and really building brands for the long term. How a lot of that is to do with the content that you make, because you can build brands on many different channels. But certainly your media decisions have a part in that. And definitely your measurement decisions, how you shift your business so it isn't just measuring short term efficiencies or sales, but truly brand tracking, tying those softer metrics back to harder metrics so that you can invest in building a brand. We know over time, building a brand delivers more for your business than just continually driving short term sales. Um, I'm really passionate about partnerships. Uh, the partnership with the agency is certainly one of them for me as a brand marketer, but our partnership with media owners, whether that's the big global uh, monsters or Facebook and Google, uh, whether that's, you know, specific local partnerships, creative content partnerships, really good stuff comes in media from partnerships. You've got to approach that in the right way. 
uh, especially at this sort of time uh, when a lot of those sort of media owners are quite struggling, quite challenged, uh, working in unusual ways, perhaps seeing big budgets disappear. You've got to be really fair and really collaborative with those people. Don't just send out lots of kind of hypothetical briefs that don't really exist to make people do lots of extra work. Identify a media owner, just seriously think about working with them. Try and work out how you can truly partner with them. Uh, and yeah, work in new, more interesting ways. A lot of the most exciting stuff we do in media comes from that. Um, I think as a sort of an extension of, of partners, it's really interesting to think about um, experts and influencers. Who are the kind of the key voices in your industry? Um, maybe they're not a person, maybe they're a website, like a tech reviews website. Maybe they are people, maybe they are the classic influencer um, person at home filming videos talking about stuff. Maybe they're a different kind of creator making content that your brand could use. But approach that sensibly, use good audience insights to identify those people, work with them without getting carried away by the magic of influence. It's, it works kind of like other media. They make content and they get it to an audience. And probably if you want it to be really impactful, you'll want to use media to expand it to the exact audience you want rather than just hoping and relying that they talk to those people for you. Um, so approach it in a grown up way. And tenth and finally, be really conscious about your media investment and invest in quality um, across all your media choices. And I think historically companies do this better in traditional media. We pay attention to kind of where our TV ads are, what channel they're on, where in the break they are. But uh, in some cases in, in digital, people have paid less attention. And there's the sort of the bad side of that about ad fraud, hate speech, ad, you know, the, the bad stuff of programmatic brand safety. Um, a lot has been done to try and deal with that. But I think there's, it's more than just avoiding the bad stuff. It's about chasing the quality. Do you want your advertising to fund good journalism, high quality, entertaining content, diverse media titles? Or do you want it to fund celebrity plastic surgery slideshows you know where do you want your brands to show up what do you want to keep on existing and quality can cost more um, and when we're just chasing a price or a cpm sometimes we erode quality and i'd really challenge you in your business to stop and look at uh, is it worth paying more for more quality because i've worked at a few different businesses um, and every time you've asked that question the answer is yes um, it is worth paying for more attention, paying for, paying for more premium spaces, uh, paying to be surrounded by high quality uh, news and information. And it's obviously a, a scale and a spectrum and there's very, very premium placements that are only right for some situations. But, but really look at that and consider kind of the diversity and inclusion that I think a lot of us have brands and companies that want to be doing the right thing. We maybe even talk about lofty purposes. And then sometimes in our media decisions, we forget all of that. Well, how do you make sure that, yes, you're avoiding the bad stuff, but you're not accidentally blocking minority voices, that you are um, funding and continuing to support those kind of titles? Um, so, yeah, 10 things that I'm thinking about, we're thinking about in media. Um, I think it would be worth us all thinking about. It's not exhaustive. Um, but if you do some of those things, I think you'll find that you have better media plans and better approaches to reaching consumers and of course you can elevate it with you know clever connections planning and more creativity and and all that um but none of that's worth doing unless you're you're doing that really important foundation so uh thanks for listening um i hope we get to to meet and speak again some other time connect with me on twitter or linkedin jerry dakin if you want to follow this up i'm always happy to talk